happy early birthday. Thank you. Thank Come you. Thank on. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Leo season. It has been too many years at this point since yeah. I've last seen you, right? Yeah, 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 it's been about two or three. Now, it's big Leo energy. Of course. All right? Happy early birthday. And mm -hmm. you gifted all of us, instead of us giving you a gift, you gifted all of us with your debut album, which sounds mm, crazy because the you. last time I saw you, which was, I think at this point, three years ago. Yeah, just about three years ago. I feel like you were working on this debut album that finally just came out, Vibe Responsibly, Volume 1. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank okay, you. Okay, so am I wrong? You've been working on it for yeah, basically. a while at yeah, this point. about three, four years now. You're just getting it right, making sure it makes sense. That's a long time. Yeah. Why? Um, you know, different conflicts between label stuff and just other little, you know, other little stuff. But, you know, just had to make it make sense at the right time. You have a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. Is that important for you when, you know, you put this body of work together? Uh, I mean, yeah. We just had to make sure that we weren't just putting out just an okay project. We wanted to make sure that I put out a project that really kind of just expressed who I am, you know what I'm saying, and just really gave a proper introduction to just my sound and just what I'm trying to do. So I didn't really mind taking time with it either way. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest part, putting your debut album together? The hardest part? Um... Probably just get inspired every day because every time I get inspired, I want to go to the booth and I want to go back to the studio and edit something or touch up something. So I guess the hardest part was trying to just like not touch up, touch up the project too much because I get too excited with this music. You're stuff. a perfectionist. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Usually, you know what? I like how you're da trying to downplay it. That's usually how perfectionists move. They something try to like downplay that. it like that. Ah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to make sure that it's just the right project. That's it. So tell uh, me, tell me one word to describe the sound of your debut album. That's, yo, vibey. Not the sound no way, but for real, it's like a whole. It's just like a. Yeah, just feel good. Yeah, just vibey. Sure. Vibey. Yeah, just vibey. Vibe responsibly. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. vibe responsibly. Okay, so we're all. That's what we're doing right now. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the songs. I, first off, I love the sample. There's a lot to discuss. Let's break down every song, okay? So let's first talk about Jodeci. Okay. The song. Okay. Okay, why? <laughs> I feel like after, after I introduce myself with, like, Gallus and they hear songs like Baychester and stuff and they see the outside party stuff or whatever like that and just, you know, the narrative which is being around a lot of women and stuff. I just wanted Wait, to Wait, hold on. Pause. What are you being a, what, say that again? Just being around a lot of women, you know. You know, but okay. I, I just wanted to kind of just show um the other side when it's like more like, nah, like you're mine. Like what what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? Just that type of conflict, just that side. So yeah, Jodice was important. And J I's on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a blessing. We outside. It's lit. Who are your top three R and B groups? Uh Jodice's number one Ooh. for me. Then I would say um, Intro and then Drew Hill. Oh, those are good ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you could create music with any of those groups right now and you have to just pick one, who would it be? Um, I would say Jodeci for sure. Jodeci Why? Jodeci for sure. Um, well, Casey, that was... That was like, yo, so so finding out about KC, because, you know, I'm, I'm a little younger, so I wasn't around during the time when he was, like, at his prime and stuff like that. But, like, his style of singing was so, like, raw, like, with the vein popping out of the neck. It's like, it was just, like, like he vulnerable. He just didn't care. As long as the sound is out, it was just that pain he was talking yeah. about. And then with, like, Devontae, work with Devontae, I'm a producer. as You know what I'm saying? I'm a musician for real, so working with... People like Devontae, that would have been OD. Um, uh, uh, JoJo was OD with the harmonies and stuff like that. He's a mastermind we're putting together just certain harmonies and stuff. So, yeah, just working with that group, just the pace that they sing, just everything. It's just so wavy about Jodeci to me. So we're... You said that you're a musician for real. What does that mean? Um, well, yeah, I'm cheating. So, like, I'm <laughs> an organist. I play guitar, the keys, mm -hmm. saxophone. Like, I'm a musician, musician first before anything. Do you think that also plays a part in why it took so long for your debut album to come out? 
because you're particular when because you're listening to music differently, right? Right, right. I'm From, hearing the kick, all of that, the snares, the everything. Like so. you're paying attention to such details. It's not just about okay, the lyrics, the, the vocals. Mm -hmm. You're listening to everything. Everything got to be right. You know what I'm saying? Everything from the narrative, the story we're trying to tell, to how loud the hi hats are, to if the guitar is sitting in the right po pocket. Everything just uh, just got to make sense. Okay, so let's break this down even further. Who mm -hmm. are your top three singers of all time? Top three singers of all time. Um, one, I would say Aaron Hall. Mm. Um, then it would be uh, Charlie Wilson. Ooh. And then I would say um, vocalist of all time, Avery Wilson. Wow. I guess when I'm hearing that, can you tell me why? What are you hearing? Um, and what are we all missing if we're not having, <laughs> you know, that list the same way as and you? And so Aaron Hall, I feel like he is like the originator of a certain sound that yeah. we heard from R. Kelly, KC. We just heard a whole bunch of artists after Joel. It was a whole bunch of artists that just, it was a certain swag that he had that kind of changed R&B that I don't think he gets credit for. Charlie Wilson, there's just something wrong with him from like the 70s. 80s, 90s, he's always been like one of the top vocalists, That's even right. now in 2024. That's right. He's going crazy with Cash Cobain. Like yeah. he does like he's just like he's he's nuts. So uh yeah, him and then um Avery uh, Wilson. Avery Wilson. well yeah, I mean Avery Wilson. That's he's just different. It's like range, it's just he's just different. Like he's just he's That's it. Like he's just, yeah, he's He's in like the you know the Clive Davis family, where like the Whitney Houston's and all that. Yeah. Like, you already know. So Icons, it's like, legends, you already know. Pioneers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, he, yeah, get, yeah. he get he get a smash. He's out of here. It's over. Okay, so if there was one person's talent vocally that mm -hmm. you admire so much that you wish you had mm -hmm. that kind of talent, who would it be? Uh, Stevie Wonder only because his Ooh. his range is so wild. Like he's hitting notes that certain people hit in falsetto in full voice, and I know when most of my music is like kind of like in not in the basement, but I wish I just had that range. That would be the only person I'll probably swap with for like a day for a, a day. couple records. Yeah, just yeah. a day. Yeah, because he's nice and stuff like that. But I feel like with my pockets, I really like what I do. So how about yeah. a month, a day, just a day? I just need like a day or two in the studio and just cut some joints. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doing tough lines or whatever, and we good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love hearing how, you know, uh, how you take music and how you're listening to it and how it comes out because you are a true musician. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting to hear how you're listening to music. It's it's just insightful, especially mm -hmm. for people like myself who are completely untalented in singing, mm -hmm. cannot hit a note. Okay, so how about female vocalists? Like, who are some of your favorite? Um, that's out right now, or just period? Period. Like, so I know this. I know a lot of people would be like, "What?" But like, so Summer Walker, I would put at actually the top. So this is a little weird. So I know, Wait, I know, I know, a top I know. ever. Low key, I feel like Summer Walker doesn't get the credit she deserves for her actual musicianship in some of these songs. Mm. So I know that like the subject matter of her songs go viral and all that stuff like that, and all the girls resonate to the things that she's saying. Because as a writer, she's definitely respected for sure. But as an actual vocalist, some of the harmonies that she be doing, some of the melodies that she be choosing, some of the the runs that she be doing, the placement of it, is just like, huh? So Summer Walker for sure. Okay. Um, I would say Mary. I like because I like that she was able. It's like R and B at the pace. She was almost singing at the pace of a rapper for her mm. time. If you know, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and then I was female singers. I would say Kiara Sheard. So she's a she's a she's a gospel artist, but she's she's she her singing style Lil Key paved the way for a lot of R and B artists. If you know, you know, a certain period. Again, I love hearing you describe <laughs> this because <laughs> it's just you are taking music in in a different way and sharing your perspective and what you feel resonates, you know, as far as, like, vocal talent. Mm -hmm. So me? interesting. Mm -hmm. How about Whitney Houston? Talent-wise, vocally. She's incredible. She's great, for sure. Okay, how about Mariah Carey? She's great. That's another one. So these are great vocalists, for sure. But I'm thinking, I'll, I'm kind of thinking more to people that, like, 
I think, influenced the industry more. So while Whitney Houston's songs were really popular, she was a great vocalist and she was very respected and stuff like that, I didn't really hear too many Whitney Houston clones after Whitney Houston. I, I don't think many can. I, I think the talent is because she is who she is. Do you, do you know I feel I mean? that, but there's a, I just feel like there's a lot of singers, though, and I don't think that they were just... I don't. I just don't think that she like changed the game with that. When Summer Walker came out, mm-hmm. all the R and B singers after Summer Walker, there was a period where they were all sounding Summer Walker esque. When Mary J Blige came out with that, like that uptown, uh, it was like it was that You're was like the standard style. now. You're talking about style, just the flavor, just what they added to the game, just how they like changed the game. I don't. Mariah Carey, we hear like the Ariana Grandes and stuff like that. There's certain people that tap into that for sure, that style. Right, but. What Summer Walker did to R and B, what uh uh like I for example like what Brandy did to R and B. Okay, I get what. Okay, I it's understand. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's yeah, Brandy changed the game. Chain. Everybody started stacking their harmonies and doing everything like Brandy. Okay, so if right now you can work on a song with either Summer Walker or Brandy, who are you going in the studio with? Um. Hmm. <laughs> So, uh, to make a song with in 2024, I'll probably uh, probably Summer Walker, because as a writer, that that would be dope to go back and forth and just like I feel like that session would be wavy. Brandy, I will go to. I I would want that session just for like the inspiration, just to learn. Like I'm going in there more as a sponge than really trying to come out there with an OD crazy record to put yeah. out. Yeah, as someone who a true musician, what's the one question you would want to ask Brandy about? What made her yo? <laughs> Stop caring about top line. There's so many questions to ask because like it's a lot of her songs don't even be having top lines. Like they just be having. It's just like a harmony party. So it'd be like, yo, what inspired that? It's just certain questions that I want to ask. Like she's just different. like the song Borderline. Mm-hmm. Ain't no single melody in that. You kind of got to sing all when you sing along to it. You got to sing all the harmonies and everything. Like it's, she's just one of those. So I just want to learn. Just want to know. Just what. Yeah. What makes you clock into that? Like, I would love to I mean? see that. Yeah. that isn't that inspirational? Isn't music just something so powerful? Mm, ever it's changing, beautiful. ever progressing. It's Absolutely. Just, mm. Okay, so I noticed you and the singer Melly chat a bit online. You know, there's a mm. lot of back and forth. It's a bit flirty vibes. What's going on Melly? here? No, nah, we just make music. Nah, okay. She was on the Christmas album. Um, we got a couple other records, but yeah, that's just, okay. she's just dope. She just wanted to go from Harlem. Okay. Very underrated from artists from Harlem. Mm. Very okay, terribly well, underrated. Tell me why. Melly doesn't really get a lot of the credit for just, like, the trends that she set as an artist um, mm. in the city. So, like, I know there's a lot of Latina artists and stuff like that in New York City and stuff, but there's a certain way that... Hmm, yeah, I don't want to say any names and stuff like that, but she just inspired a lot of, a lot of, a lot of shorties from from their actual music sound mm. to, like, what they're wearing, how they're wearing certain things. I feel like she's, like, one of the original Jiggy Harlem shorties. That's what oh, okay. Or, I, you know what? I, I love hearing artists show love to other artists. Or, I think mm. it's important because a lot of times, I, I, especially in this day and age, I do feel like sometimes when you show love, it turns into, like, oh, you're obsessed with that person, you're being a groupie, and it's like, no, I could just really like somebody's music. Yeah, I'm a fan okay. of music before anything. As you see, I'm I'm a fan of this before I even enter the chat when when it comes to, like, actually being an artist and stuff. So there's certain people like Melly and stuff like that that were making music and inspired mad people before I even got started recording. So, so. amazing. I love that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so are you still tired of depressing R&B music? For sure. Okay, what is depressing R&B music to you? Um, there was just a period after, I feel like, 20, like, 15. So, like, before 2015, the R&B before that, we had, like, do you remember the era with, like, August Alcina, yes. Trey Songz, Chris Brown, when they were at the top of the food chain? Jeremiah. It was, oh, my gosh, that was yes. the wave. It was, fi- it was fire as hell. Yeah, that, yeah. R- that R&B was damn near arrogant. It was, like, I could <laughs> sing better than you. My... Uh, everything is, I'm bad. I, it's just a vibe. You, they yeah. pulling up with they party. It was a certain energy. And then after, like, there was a certain period. I don't know what the shift, where the shift was, where it was, it became, like, cooler to be, like, this, like, introvert and this, like, passive, quiet, timid guy. Mm-hmm. And all this, everybody started deleting everything off their Instagram pages and being this mysterious artist. And then their music started reflecting that energy because now their songs are so, like, 
just small, not small energy. I don't want to disrespect anybody's craft, but it's just more like, just more calm and 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 just happy to be here, type of energy. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, I don't know. We kind of tired of that. I'm from the Bronx. I'm from Uptown, where it's wavy and vibey, where it's lit. <laughs> it's summertime. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a great time to be alive. I'll be wanting people to hear my music and feel like I can't even cry comfortably. I can't even feel sorry for myself comfortably to this music. Like I have to feel myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you don't think you've made sad songs, sad R&B songs? Of course, songs? I make songs that reflect I, I, all types of different moods. There's, I feel like on this song, there's, on this album, there's 22 songs and 22 moods for real. But we just didn't really dwell into anything sad. And even when it comes to like sad, it will be a song that talks about probably... Which one? Let me think. That's why I'm trying to even mm. find where it was even sad. Because I know there was a song where I was missing a shorty and I said... um. Like, I, I want you back, and I'm sorry, but even that is not really sad. It's more like I'm trying to get past whatever is going on. Which song is that right? That's One More Chance. Okay. I got one song called One More Chance. Um, yeah, when it comes to say, yeah, I don't really have too much sad music on this album. I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Poison. Tell me about this song. Poison is just saying, yo, you so fire. I've... Yo, I either heard some things or I saw you do something that was real sneaky and I know what that sign is or whatever like that. But it's like, yo, you so far, I don't even, not that I don't care, but it's like, <laughs> yo, like this connection is so wavy. I don't even want this to stop right now. It's like, I'm not even, I'm when you're almost delusional about a show, you're ignoring certain all things for her and all that. All the red flags you don't care about. Red flags look like six flags when it's the right <laughs> show, for real. You know what I'm saying? So Poison was just that energy where it's like, yo, what we doing, man? Yeah. So I don't even want to hear about it. Don't even tell me what we doing. We out. When was the last time you felt that way? Um, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, like it's, it's like now, you go to different cities and all the different. Just there's so many interesting personalities and <laughs> people you meet. <laughs> okay, so would you rather not know, you know, if someone was cheating on you, if mm. they were. Poison? No, I need to know if it's a cheating thing. If you are, if we are together, locked in so much to the point where, if you do something miscellaneous, it'll be called cheating. Yeah. Then, yeah. Are you sure? It's over. Like, yeah. I need to. I need to know you cheating, cheating. But if it's like a situation where it's like, we just kind of either kicking it or we just like. I don't know how to describe it. It's just it just varies. Situation just varies. Different. Yeah. D different levels of. Toxic behavior you're willing to deal uh, with, or something like that. Basically, something, okay. something like that. W what are three red flags when it comes to dating for you? I don't know. Something wrong with me, miss. Because I'm not gonna lie, this sometimes. Because a red flag on one person is not necessarily a red flag for on somebody else. It's kind of really it's hard. Spoken to Spoken like someone like, who's very toxic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm this not is toxic. A red flag. I think I'm just I'm just understanding. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that's it. <laughs> if anything. You know You're very understanding. Okay, so what are three things you know for you? You just, once they do these three things, you're just like, ah, this might not work out for us anymore. Um, I'm trying to think. Nothing's really coming to mind because there's probably some 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 big no-nos in my book too and I just can't think of, I can't think of them. I guess when I see them. You're I very just, understanding. To, yeah, to an extent. To, yeah, to it works. Extent. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so your friend comes up to you and they're telling you, they're they're dating somebody, but you know she keeps ghosting him, right? Mm. Like every yeah, time you're she... not really dating her, so that's so she's ghosting. What are we talking about here, Bridgerton? It's over. That's what I'm saying. That's Is I that guess a that's red a flag? I guess that's a red flag, but it's more like you know that's more of a miscommunication. You think you dating shorty, you haven't heard from her in three days. That's miscommunication on your part. There's something <laughs> this, that's it. I don't think that's more of a red flag. It's more of just. You got to know what's going on, brother. I don't think that's a situation you're really in for real. How about if your friend's like, yeah, you know, my girlfriend, we've been together for a while, but she still keeps in touch with her ex. Is that a red flag? Yeah, that's a dub. That's not even a red flag. You still talk to your ex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we All right, so we're calling that these things red flags. Oh, cool, that's fine. a red flag. So for red you. Red flag, right. Yeah, there yeah, you go. yeah. You talk okay. to your ex, yeah, you're a dub. Yeah, you ghosted me, you're a dub. These are just like clear dubs, though. These are not even red flags that I could that to look past to me. Okay. Ghost to me. I'm not looking past you. Ghost to me. Are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I think you're very understanding, which is pretty nice and amazing. Um, when was the last time you had your heart broken? Just curious. Um, I haven't really got my heart broken like that for real. For and me. ever. Mm -hmm. For being very honest. 
Are you doing the heartbreaking? Nah, uh, I mean, I'm not the hero in everybody's story. Somebody, you know what I'm saying? I might have, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 got, I got a lot of opportunities to learn. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. For sure, in the past, like, 10 years, for sure. You if are anything. living life right now. You're yeah, having a good nah, time. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't really get heartbroken. I feel like I'm a really good learner, so if anything, I kind of be... um. Oh, um, not guarded, but a little bit more cautious and everything because I see what certain shorties would do to their men for me. So I'm like, yo, you wow. don't even, I, so why am I even? What? You have to share just one example. Like, no, what? it's just, just, just lying, just nothing crazy, just lying to your man or doing whatever like that. Or, you know what I'm saying? Just certain little things that I'm Oof. watching a show you do while she's at my crib, certain calls. I'm like, oh man, this is crazy. And he loves you. Like, he really loves you. So I just do, don't Do you really... feel guilty at all that? No, that's not, that's not, that's not, <laughs> not, that's not. You don't feel guilty that you're, you know, the side piece in this? No, I'm the victim here. <laughs> <laughs> if anything. <laughs> it. Why are you the she victim? She doesn't, because I don't owe him loyalty. She she does. But I mean, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's a given. And that's it. All right. Mm. This this has been very insightful. I'm going to listen to Vibe responsibly. Volume one. Just very, I'm going to listen to it closely and I'm going to be like, oh, that, mm, Mm. Mm, I need to talk to him about if this anything. next time I see ah, him. Yep, yep, There's yep. a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I thought it was also interesting, you know, when we're talking about, like, more mysterious vibes for a lot of singers as of, you know, in recent years, like you were talking about. You did say you liked Tommy Richmond's song, Million Dollar Baby, a bit more after mm. seeing him perform it live. For sure. What was it about that, again, having this conversation, you're a true musician. What is it mm. about that, what you saw, that made you realize, you know what, I like this song? Um, I feel like this is not, well, it's just not an easy song. Like, listening to it, mm -hmm. it's not an easy song to sing along to, even if you're just in the car and just mad loud. It's still a little hard to sing along to. So he's performing it, and I'm like, yo, he's hitting the notes. This takes a lot of, like, all right, I just, I guess it was more like a, res more of a respect for him that grew that day more than the like for the song, mm -hmm. if anything. Because I was like, yeah, this is... No, nah, he's nice. No, nah, this is this is a singer. My fault. I didn't know it was all that. <laughs> I just didn't know. See, right now when you were saying that, I'm like, well, you know, I do try to sing along with it, but I'm, it's a mess. It's a disaster. But you're talking as a re like someone who can actually really sing. Mm -hmm. So that's... Okay, I like that. Was there any other song or artist that performed that you saw that you felt the same way about and you were just like wow they really did a great job with that um any other moments like that yeah yo so i saw uh uh janae uh Ico perform the other day for the first time and i mean i mean i'm a guy i'm not really in i'm not 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 in terms like that i just wasn't really paying attention as much and when i saw her perform these songs live and stuff like that it was like whoa 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 <laughs> This is this is an artist, artist, not my fault. Yeah. So yeah, her Koi, there's a couple of artists that changed my mind just because I just saw their performance and I was like, yeah, no, I just got it. I I love hearing that because I think it also shows that you know while you're very critical, clearly, right? Because you're a musician, so you're listening to music at a different way. That you're also realizing, oh, I can have a change of heart in this moment. For sure, absolutely. Because I know that everybody that's Yo, these people are not rich and famous for no reason. Like, and they have they found their tribe, and it's just a matter of just being open and seeing why their tribe loves them so much. So sometimes when you go to their shows, you be like, oh, okay, now I understand why it's thousands of people that love what they do because this is incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for just sure. a matter of being open. Yeah. Okay, so you do have Tory Lanez on your song "Whole Team" mm -hmm. on your debut album, and you have expressed your support for Tory Lanez's music. Mm -hmm. You posted free Tory Lanez, one of the greatest. <laughs> ever do it ever mm -hmm. were you worried about the backlash in supporting him not really because mm -hmm. i mean internet a is not really real for real there's a lot of people that support him for real and um yeah nah he changed my life before and after i met him so it was like i, I didn't really i don't really see i didn't i didn't know much. that so you were friends with him mm, yeah okay but my first time on a jet you know what i'm saying like all the flies Certain things to not look like to look out for in the industry, put me on game. Like, there's certain things that you just like, even like for artistry, I haven't really before I met him, just as a fan, it was like, he's like, he's elite. Then 
being with him in the studio and seeing the process and learning certain things about just like cutting records and how quick you can do it if you just focus on certain. This mad stuff that I learned from him. That's like you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So how did he, you get him on the album? Um, like how does this? Work? Like I said in other interviews, there's something wrong with Tori. He pulled up to the studio session. This is after he torched the uh, the last Funk Flex freestyle mm -hmm. joint. He came straight from there. Came straight to the studio. Um, recorded. Uh, he was like, "Yo, before I even." Before I even slap this Gallus joint, uh, what you need me on? Because I know you got a joint for me. I was like, oh, <laughs> yo, nah, this got it. I did, all right. Well, yeah, you're right. I got a joint. It's, it's, it's this joint. So I gave him that joint, and then he torched Gallus right after that. Got it. Okay. So, you know, for people who are watching, and just for the record, Tory was found guilty of all three charges prosecutors mm. brought against him. Assault with a firearm, illegal possession of a firearm, and negligent discharge of a gun for shooting Megan the Stallion. This is per NPR. How do you deal with that? Do you understand? That no, must, I feel that, you. That has to be. But I mean, I don't know. Because I mean, realistic, like, he's that's still my brethren. I don't know too much about the judicial system. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know too much about that stuff, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to yeah. all that. But, and I try to not get too, too involved. But, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's my brethren. And that, and I, and I think that, you know, I was actually surprised that you did, you know, like actually put him on an album and then post your support for him. You know, it's always a tough situation when you are friends with somebody. But yeah, and plus, I mean, the more people get to know me, the more they get to know. I don't really operate in fear like that, so I don't really mind really. Yeah. Things. Well, you also said that you said people were about to start with the death threats. Have people. Said yeah, no. Nah, when I said the death you? threat thing, that was a response to the death threats. Like there was, they, like they already did that. Like they, they they've been wilding. And crazy. and they were giving you death threats because of your support for Tory. So basically, so I was just like, yeah, 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 yeah I, I just type in, y'all do what y'all do. I like oh, y'all. That's that a, it. you know, you gotta have thick skin to just be willing to, you know, you gotta have the thick skin to be an artist. Period. So it's like, I mean, this is kind of what we sign up for. Period. Any opinion that I give on really anything, I have to be prepared for. Um, people who disagree and extremists and how things go for real. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Does your family ever hit you up and they're like, oh, why am I seeing this? Or please, you know, because... Um, people. I mean, people did before, but now the people that know me, they just be like, oh, gosh. Yo. When they see me in person, they be like, yo, you are crazy. But it's all good. That's just you. I get it. That's It's just you. So mm -hmm. for your family and friends, they're not surprised when you are going against the grain or anything like that or have just mm, a different yeah. opinion. Mm, yeah, because usually how I feel is how I feel. Unless, you know what I'm saying? Unless, um, yeah, either I'm either proven otherwise or somebody presents me with new information with things like that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty open. I'm a good learner and stuff like that. But usually how I feel is how I feel. I said what I said. Okay, listen. And I think that comes with you know, artistry and having that thick skin, like you said. But, you know, not everybody can do that. Not everybody will stand on it and and um, move like that. Okay, so in that same vein, you also publicly explained your comments about Dwayne Wade regarding Dwayne's daughter, Zaya. Mm. And you said you spoke from a place of ignorance initially, right? For sure. What did you learn from that experience? And, you know, what did you... Um... Just think before you talk and just be more mindful of, who, you know what I'm saying, how you word things or just how you say things, period, or just, you know what I'm saying, who you can offend and all that. Just take all these things into consideration before you just share opinions or just say whatever. That's it. Just be more mindful. Yeah. What did you initially think? Obviously, you posted pretty harsh, ignorant statements. Mm. And then you explained further what you meant and, you know, took accountability for speaking from a place of ignorant. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like you could do better moving forward as far as not being, being as knowledgeable about topics that you may not know about? Mm -hmm. Are you going to take, is it like, all right, let me take a second. Let me let me read further. Let me talk to somebody. Yeah, for sure. Just being more mindful. So before you even share an opinion, just make sure that's not coming from a place of ignorance. Make sure you really know what you're talking about, if anything. Or just don't really say anything at all if it's not anything that's, um, you know what I'm saying, that's... Really worth worth sharing for real like that, but yeah, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Was there anything that you felt like people didn't understand, or you know, that you feel like now that you're actually having a conversation, that you feel like you know, I wish you would have done something different, or I wish I could have handled something different. Is there anything that you felt in any of these situations that mm. you could have done different? Um, 
Not really. Talked out of turn and then apologized. You know what I'm saying? Took accountability and, you know what I'm saying? Acknowledge certain things and move forward. I don't really... I don't know. I feel like even how... It just could have been way, 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 way crazier. Like, I, like they could have really fried me way, way, way worse. So, I'm like, I'm just grateful that, you know what I'm saying, we were able to, you know what I'm saying, say what I said and just, all right, I'm out of there. It's not me versus y'all. It's all good. We here. My fault. Got it. And that okay. was it. Okay. Well, I want to talk to you about, since the time I last saw you, a lot mm -hmm. has happened. You had your massive hit song, Gallus. Mm -hmm. We heard every remix possible. So much success. Mm -hmm. What did that song teach you about the industry? The good mm. and the bad. Uh, really, that uh, that is a it's a business for real. So as much as I love um, the music side of it, in the music business, the music business is really more the business of the music than it is the music of the business. Once you really learn that for real, you'll flourish. When I came in with Gallus, I was just wide eyed. I was like, oh my gosh, this is <laughs> a possible thing. I'm meeting all my idols. This is incredible. Um, so there were certain things that I just wasn't mindful of or being adamant about. And there's, now it's like, I already seen the worst. I seen the best. I already know what we're doing. We got the game plan. We out. It's lit. We ain't even, I ain't even slowing down no pace. We out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things I learned for sure. Like timing of things, like the timing of re when to drop certain records, um, just the placement of certain things. Just, I'm just learning a lot. That's yeah. It. It's what a lot was of that factors. the hardest lesson? Um, like I said, that it's a business that people aren't really in. There's a lot of people that aren't, they're not, they're not in this, like, make friends. People have to feed their families and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, just to be more understanding. If you, if you have a record that's hot or if you have a, uh, just motion or whatever like that, of course, certain things will be more appealing to, you know what I'm saying, to other people that have things going on or whatever like that, or other platforms or whatever. And you can't really get too... You can't really feel too down when the motion isn't as great or whatever like that and people aren't picking up your phone. Well, just get yourself hot again. Why, you know what I'm saying? Why you even want to be on people's phone when you don't got the motion yet or whatever? Why, you know what I'm saying? Just mm. just get your situation right and then just pop back out. Make it make sense for real. Like, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Instead of getting offended that people aren't as warm to you as they were when you were hot. That's it. Did you initially take that personal? Um, yeah. At first, I was like, yo, like, I just came off of number one. It's lit. Like, I'm still me. Like, what's up? And then that's when it just had to kick in. I was like, yeah, nah, but nah. They, whoever that that person was, I'm even trying to contact right now, they were around before because I had a number one, and mm -hmm. they, had some, they had a platform or something that would have made sense for us to be in conversation with. If you're not there, then it doesn't make any sense. It's just Yeah, just not to get offended, man. You can't be getting offended by every little thing in the industry. Once you see it as a business, you'll more see it as something to win than, than like a, a club of friends to be cast out of. How long did it take for you to understand that? Uh, it was fairly quick. I'm not going to lie to you. It was pretty quick. Yeah. Once I <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. it was really just one day of even feeling oh. that. No, realistically though, because wow. after, because one day if you're calling somebody and not picking up and you see that they're still online, whatever like that, and it's just like, all right, yo, yo, all right. After a couple hours, it's like, well, what do I have to really offer right now while I be even trying to get this person <laughs> on the phone? I, I don't even need to, because then I'm calling somebody to ask for something. Mm. Whereas when you have your own motion, you have certain things, you're not really asking for anything. You're calling people to make a, a situation happen that you know what I'm saying like, I have this going on right now I know you have this platform you have this whatever let's collab on this or whatever so you're not yeah. really asking asking for too much so I'm yeah like I said I'm just I'm just learning to understand how this goes for real yeah. it's all good who was the person that messed it up I'm kidding you don't have to <laughs> yes. who, who's the person who just trust me so cold yeah. cold mm -hmm. now you gotta be just all about business okay tell me about the best part about your performance when Nicki Minaj brought you out to her show in Brooklyn um, the best part was, yo, just meeting Nicki Minaj in person, yo, realistically. Like, I know, like, the being on stage was great and all that. That was a beautiful thing. I'm great, very grateful for the ability, or for the opportunity to of perform course. in front of her people, bro. The bar was in them. But, yeah, bro, just meeting um, Nicki Minaj in the flesh, that's, like... Yeah, so wait, you can't... What happened? How was the conversation? First, let's start from the beginning. How did you know... That Nikki wanted you to show out at 
uh, you know, her. through Booth. I know because she's not gonna be in the white DMs moving miscellaneous. So DJ Booth. I okay. Know and yeah, he introduced me as legendary. Shout out to DJ Booth. Okay, so you get there now. Did you have a conversation with her before you got there, or was it happening at the show? It basically, happened <gasps> in real time. Okay, so did that add any nervousness to the whole situation? Because it's like. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes and no. So, as soon as I realized, like, she like she know who I am, I felt like the nerves kind of went away because it's like, man, clock it, man. This is what you want, <laughs> man. This is what Get you do. Together. You heard that shit, man. You got a job. Go on stage, go crazy, and that's it, man. This is what you do. Nicki Minaj, yeah. know your name. It's a movie. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. Word. And what it, how was her, you know, demeanor? What did she say to you? She We're Nicki fans. You know, we love the barbs, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's always very interesting to hear you as an artist meeting someone. Nicki's an icon. She's mm-hmm. a legend who's been in the game for a long time and still doing it, still making it happen. Mm-hmm. It, what was that conversation like, or was it just you showing your gratitude for this opportunity? Yeah, it was really me doing most of the talking. I didn't really ask her too much questions or nothing like that, so it was just me telling her I'm a big fan and woo <laughs> Nah. But um, yeah, she was chilling though. It wasn't nothing. I didn't get any kind of. Ar- I didn't get no arrogant vibes, no miscellaneous nothing. She was chilling, getting ready for her show. Shout out to Nicki Minaj. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. And did you? I mean, at that moment, were you just like? Did that give you more excitement when you went on stage? Basically, just more. Just yeah, I just put the battery in my back. Like it's that's, lit. That's amazing. Was there anyone else that you've come across that you know? Obviously, you admire their work. And they acknowledged you. And, and, you know, not that we need validation, right? Like, of course, we should mm. all be validated within ourselves. But the reality is we like the validation at times. Was yeah. there anyone else that you came across that showed your work love or, you know, saw um, the hard work, the grind that you were putting in? And it meant something to you. Uh, Jamie Foxx hit me. That was dope. Ooh. Hello. Mm. Oh, wait. Word. Okay, how did this happen? When was uh, this? You just hit me to first. You liked the, you liked the same. We didn't have no deep conversation or nothing. Just the fact that you saw my page and DM me. And that was it. In and out. Hello. Hello. Yeah, That's it. So just I now, now I know there's an opportunity to be able to at least buck up and work or something, something in the future. So. That's amazing. Jamie Foxx. Yeah. He's you know, now. it's a reminder that we just never know who's watching our work and our grind. Mm. And I always tell people, it's not about what you do that people can see or what mm. when the cameras are on. It's right. about the work that you do when the cameras aren't on you. For sure. And other great people will notice it. They'll see it. It's a lot of hard work. That's why, you know, when we first started our conversation, I wanted to point out the fact that you've been working a long time on this debut album. Mm-hmm. I remember when you posted a snippet of Usher's song, and then now we're just hearing it on the album. Mm-hmm. That was years ago. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's the hard work and having the confidence that it's going to work out for you. For sure. Absolutely. I believe in my team. I believe in the music that we're making. Um so I already know it's just a matter of just finding our tribe. And we here now. It's lit. And now you were with Joe Budden recently. Mm. He apologized. He apologized rare. to you. Very Joe rare. doesn't really apologize, in to my anybody. opinion, for the most part, right? Mm. And he apologized to you, just, you know, the body of work, the hard work that you're putting in. What did it, Has there been other people in general that have, not question, but they, you know, they might have not given you the look maybe or... Giving you mm. a chance. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's everybody, though. Realistically, yeah. if you really know the Capella Gray story, it's really everybody. Because there was cause because I didn't drop the debut album, people didn't really know it was more than just a song or two, realistically. Correct. So that's another thing. When it comes to this music thing, you just got to be understanding and just be transparent. I know that people knew they loved this song. They loved, like, the couple of singles I put out and stuff, but they didn't know the different sides of me. I didn't really introduce myself. And that usually comes with, like, a debut album or a body of work where you could really, you know what I'm saying, show show all that so i didn't really mind certain talks and stuff like that joe apologized but realistically he didn't really need to do that because i like i understood that before i dropped vibe responsibly volume one i understand what the narrative was i understand what the nar- the energy was coming in i just understand all that so i'm just grateful that i put together a project that people could say well it was worth the wait all right let's start let's begin that's it that is a great outlook though 
Because mm-hmm. you could have easily been in your head, been like, oh, they're counting me out. Mm-hmm. People don't really know. They think I'm just going to be a one-hit wonder, this, this, this. No, no, I can't say that without putting out. A, if, I, if I came out with a debut album and they called me that still, that, that would have been like, okay, all right. Then I would have felt like, you know, they sleeping on me. But it was like, they, there wasn't really much to sleep on. I didn't really put myself out there. I wasn't really ready, whether the, with, between the deal or whatever the situations were. I just wasn't ready to present that yet. And now, there's an introduction, my first headline. And show, August 3rd, this whole time I've been moving around, body and everybody said, I ain't even have my own headline and show show, like my own show show. And this is happening the day after your birthday. Hello, August 3rd in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Big Leo energy. The By the way, congratulations on the great reception behind your debut album. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know that it's got to feel good. Appreciate that. Hopefully, next time I see you, we'll be talking about, you know, next projects maybe jamie fox can follow through with an acting gig or something like you know we need bigger and um i want to say better but you know you're doing what you want to do and i mean how many people can say that in this world that they get to do what they love to do and make a living from it appreciate that appreciate that of course congratulations